This is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for it. And where we're at today, we're at Gilcrease Orchard here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And when you think of Las Vegas, you know, uh, having a U Pick farm is probably not your first thought of what's happening in Vegas because there's a lot of other stuff happening on the strip and all this kind of stuff. But I want to let you guys know that, you know, Las Vegas was originally founded by the Mormons and they, they basically uh, stayed here because there was a springs and they were able to grow their own food. You know, just a, like a hundred years ago, they didn't have like, you know, super Walmarts and all these stores and fast food joints to get your food. And if you didn't grow your own food, you weren't eating. And you know, that's what I'm here to share with you guys. You know, I want you guys to get back to nature as much as you can. And I want you guys to eat a, a good plant-based diet, rich in fresh fruits and fresh vegetables. And that's what Gilcrease Orchard is providing the community and more importantly has been providing the community for over the last 35 years now. So they've been here, you know, for a long time doing this stuff. And I think that there needs to be more places like this because it's the fact of the matter is clear. Small farms such as Gilcrease are going under all the time because of big, large agribusiness that's getting involved with organic agriculture. So I always encourage you guys to shop your local farmers markets you know, before shopping the local health food store and getting organic produce. But even better than that is supporting a local farm where you can pick your own produce. And I'll share some of the benefits of picking your own produce in a minute when I go into the fields. Uh, but also what's really important to me besides supporting your own farm is starting your own backyard farm. And if you want to learn how to grow your own food in Las Vegas or many other places, you want to be sure to check my other channel, GrowingYourGreens.com, which is where I teach you guys how you can start growing your own food no matter where you live. I mean, they grow here in Vegas, gets up to like just a couple years ago, it was like 118 degrees out. Last year is like 114 degrees in the summer. And they still grow food successfully. You know, no matter if you got hail, sleet, snow, you know, all this stuff doesn't top the post office and it shouldn't stop you guys either from growing your own food or at least coming out and supporting Gilcrease. Now, Gilcrease is only open select days of the week. At present time, they're open Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. This changes depend, depending on you know the time of the year and what they have in season. Uh, the other thing to remember is that they open early and close around noon. This is for one very important reason in Las Vegas, especially in the summer. It gets really hot really fast. In the middle of the day, you do not want to be out in the fields. You'll probably pass out of heat, heat exhaustion. So the one tip I want to give you guys first off is wake up early if you're coming to Gilcrease, man. They open at 7 a.m get here right at the crack of dawn, right when they open, uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's gonna be cooler. Uh, number two, you're gonna have the best selection, man. So, you know, as the day goes on, more people get here, more people pick their own stuff, and all the best stuff will be gone. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and uh, take you on a tour of Gilcrease, how this works so that you could come here and pick some of the best produce so that you and your family could start eating healthier today. All right, so when you guys arrive at Gilcrease, you'll be presented with two options. Option number one is park outside. This way you're gonna save a couple bucks, but you're gonna have to walk and get more exercise, which is a good thing. Option number two is actually drive in. And uh, when you come in, whether you walk or drive in, if you drive in, it will cost you like three bucks to drive in, or I recommend uh, getting an annual season pass. If you live in the area, this is one time investment. Then you could drive in every time. This is definitely gonna pay for itself easily in the summertime in the middle of the heat if you continue to come to Gill Crease like I would encourage you guys to. Now, the thing when you get to the entrance area here, what you're gonna to wanna to notice is two things. Number one, you're gonna to wanna to say hi to the beautiful young lady who's working here. And uh, you're gonna ask her two things. You know, what's in season? She'll tell you what's in season. Also, you can see this actually on the board there. You could also request a map from her if you don't know where things are and she'll gladly explain to you where you could go to pick the best stuff and number two you're going to want to pick up some bags so you can bring your own cloth tote you could bring your own paper bags which i recommend if you're going to get a lot of fruit i recommend bringing some you know uh, boxes to collect the fruit in because if you put ripe fruit in bags it's going to mush and get bad and you could also pick up a few plastic bags you know to put all the produce in that you expect to buy now if you don't use the bag that's all right just bring it back and give them to the checkout so that they can reuse them later I always want to encourage you guys to bring your own bags and reusable bags instead of you know using the plastic bags that they have available. I guess the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to go into the fields and I'm going to share with you guys all the different produce items that are available today and share with you guys how to best pick the ripest ones and the best ones so that you could be eating fresh fruits and vegetables grown here in Las Vegas at home. 
All right, as you guys can see, we're here on the farm and I've been walking down this road past a whole bunch of apple trees and they got a whole section of fig trees growing up right here. Hopefully we'll have some figs real soon. One of the fruits that could do well in Vegas. And then behind that there in the area, uh, they got the you pick area that I'm going to right now. And uh, we're gonna pick some greens, some carrots, some beets, and some other cool stuff they have growing. So uh, let's head on and continue down the road. All right, as you guys can see, we made it to the fields where all the vegetables are, and uh, in general, they have everything fairly well marked. So if you're if you're new here and you don't know what kind each different item is, look for a sign. This row actually says crops not ready to pick, and uh, most other rows have a sign, and sometimes in between the rows, they have a new variety of crops. So in these rows, they have all different kinds of zucchinis. Over in the other row, they actually have about three different kinds of kale, including curly kale, Siberian kale, and the dinosaur kale. Of the three, of course, I love the Siberian. So actually, let's go ahead and check out the Siberian kale next. Now I'm sitting next to this row of beautiful kale. You know, kale is one of the most nutritious vegetables on the planet. According to the ANDI scoring system, ANDI scoring system stands for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index. It stands for the food that has the most amount of nutrition with the least amount of calories. So for example, a soda on the list is like a one, the kale ranks out at a thousand. This list was put together by Dr. Joel Furman and I would recommend his book if you're looking into getting healthier. It's called Eat to Live. So kale is one of the most nutritious foods, yet here today at the farm, I don't see actually anybody harvesting the kale. They're all over the zucchinis. So I really want to encourage you guys, every time you come out to the farm, pick some leafy green vegetables. You know, in my opinion, the standard American is deficient in leafy green vegetables. The per capita consumption of kale is like a quarter pound per year. Man, I'll eat that in a day. My goal every day is to eat two pounds of leafy greens a day. They are that important. Most Americans focus on the fast food, the junk food, foods that are high in calories and low in nutrients. I want you guys to turn that around and eat foods that are high in nutrients, low in calories, and the kale is simply it. And the good thing to know is that kale that's fresh picked is gonna taste a lot better than the stuff from the store. You know, I know you guys have had kale from the store and it tastes like that bitter, funky, gross flavor, but if you pick it fresh, it tastes better. The reason is, once kale starts to go bad, once it's been picked, you know, it starts to go bad, and it starts tasting grosser and grosser, and then it gets kind of yellow and stuff, right? Not so here, it's nice, dark, and green. It's gonna taste the freshest and the bestest. So there's uh, two ways you could do this. Number one, you're gonna wanna pick the nice big outer leaves. These leaves are the leaves you're gonna want for juicing and for blending up. Also, if you wanna cook them up, this would be my preferred way. But if you wanna get more kale in you, because they are selling it by the pound here, you have the choice to pick the larger, small ones. If you go to the grocery store, you know, pretty much they only ever give you the large ones, you know, one big bunch for a couple bucks, right? But even better yet, the best ones are the nice baby tender ones. These are the tender kale greens. These are the best for eating in salads. I mean, why even cook them up? Why even saute them when they're this small and baby, so tender and delicious? Even the nice young stalks, mmm, super tender and wow, this is quite sweet. Another great use of the kale in this day and age are to make kale chips. Be sure to check my other episodes on how to make your own kale chips in your dehydrator so that you can get more greens in you. All right, so if you guys thought I like kale so much, guess what? I like these guys that are right next door to the kale. These are collards, these are closely related to kale. They taste a little bit different, have a different flavor. You may gravitate more towards the kale, or you may, like me, gravitate more towards the collards. I love the collards better. You could make the collard chips out of them. Once again, you can actually juice them up, uh, put them in a green smoothie. So a simple green smoothie to make, you guys could make with the collard greens or the kale, is take uh, you know some water, put it in the blender with a couple bananas, maybe a frozen one or two, and a whole bunch of collard greens and blend them up. The bananas are gonna overpower the taste of the kale so that you'll be able to get some greens in you. Uh, once again, you know, these can be used the same way as kale. The large ones, great for uh, juicing, blending, cooking, and the small ones, definitely nice and tender for salads. Mmm. These to me taste sweeter actually than the kale. Mmm. I love them a lot. Now, another cool, unique use of the collard greens, if you come here, you want to try to find a nice large leaf here like this. And uh, later in the season, they'll even get bigger. You could use these instead of tortilla shells or wraps. So put whatever you're going to wrap in there, maybe some guacamole and salsa, roll them up in a wrap, and just eat them. 
Mm. So another way to get more greens in you, use the collard greens and even the kale as wraps. So another leafy green they have here is another kind of kale, actually. This one's called the dinosaur kale. So get the kids involved, you know, and many people bring their kids here, which I think is an excellent field trip. And to get kids involved in picking, eating, and, you know, learning about where food comes from, because the fact of the matter is clear. If you survey most kids in America today, they'll say food comes with the supermarket or the fast food joint, but not Mother Earth, not the ground. So what this stuff is, this stuff is called the dinosaur kale, also called the black kale, Tuscan kale, lacinato kale. This stuff can get expensive. I mean, kale is all the rage. This can be used in exactly the same way as the other kale. You know, my primary use is for you to blend it up or to juice it. But let me tell you, this stuff also makes some delicious kale chips. All right, so what we're looking at next is something Popeye loved. I know many of you guys may have seen the Popeye cartoons when we were kids, and guess what? Popeye always had his spinach out of a can. You know, spinach out of a can is not quite as good as fresh picked spinach from Gilcrease. I mean, this stuff is so tender, so delicate. Mmm. Now, spinach does not travel well, so when they pick it and ship it, it's not as good as pick fresh. Let's talk about, you know, uh, there's studies that show within 24 hours up to 50% of certain nutrients can be lost you know when they're picking uh, and shipping produce items that's just within 24 hours and as time goes on nutrient levels go down that's why I believe it's critically important to either grow your own or come support Gilcrease where you could actually literally pick your own greens and other foods fresh take them home and eat them so you have the highest level of nutrition in there now the other thing I want to talk about is the greens are really rich in protein. So some people might believe man cannot live on greens alone. <laughs> well, I don't know about just living on greens alone, but you can get all the protein requirements you need from the plant foods, including the greens. If you think about it, many people are taught that, you know, we need to eat meat and eat animals for our protein because they got the protein. Well, think about where does the animal get its protein? It eats lots of greens. The problem is most people are not simply eating enough greens. So my favorite greens that they're growing here today by far is the bok choy. And it's quite sad that hardly nobody's buying the bok choy. The bok choy, once again, is sold by the pound. And the easiest way to harvest your bok choy is with your clippers. You're going to want to come down to the base of the plant, find a plant that's not super old, come down and snip. And then we're going to pull it up. Look at that. One nice head of bok choy. Now, bok choy to me is like a lettuce substitute. It is that mild, especially this white stalk area. I like to chop this up into little uh, pieces and eat that as a salad. If my choices are organic lettuce from Whole Foods or locally grown fresh picked bok choy, you know, I'm gonna pick the fresh picked bok choy every single time. You know, ah, there's, there's no substitute for how fresh, crisp, and you know, actually uh, mineral rich and salty flavor uh, these stocks taste plus you're getting all the beneficial nutrients in the greens so my number one use of this stuff is actually uh, eating in salads I would then also uh, end up juicing it and it's rare that I blend the bok choy but I might blend the uh, the tops of the greens and then I'll eat all the stocks as a salad this stuff is super delicious and I want you guys to get some bok choy in you today so now we're gonna show you guys how to pick a zucchini as you guys can see we have a zucchini plant but this is not just any zucchini plant you know, you may be familiar with your standard zucchinis, you know, that they sell at the market, but there's many different kinds of zucchinis that you can purchase. And it's unfortunate that in commercial agriculture, you can't find all the different varieties. I mean, I could name at least a dozen varieties off the top of my head, you know, and they have a good handful of varieties here. Each one's a little bit different. They taste a little bit different. They grow a little bit different, and they're going to be super delicious to eat. The one that I'll be primarily be harvesting today is right here. You can see, John, those are zucchinis. They look like little fruits. They're round, actually. So one of the tips for you guys is you want to bring some clippers like this. You know, if you go to the 99 only store here in Las Vegas, you can get them for a dollar uh, or bring a knife. Uh, it's not good to be just like trying to tear these off with no tools because then what's going to happen is you're going to mess up the little stem end. And if you mess up the stem end and, and cut off into the fruit here, then that means your fruit will expire and go bad faster. So you want to preserve as much of this little stem end on the zucchini as possible. So I got my clippers. I'm going to kind of go under here and take some time to kind of get it closest to the uh, trunk of the little plant here and cut and check it out. Look at that little baby, that little wonder there. Guess what this one's called? 
for you pool players, what ball does this look like? Looks like the one ball. Yeah, this is called one ball squash, and it's uh, perfect when it's this stage, nice and tender. Um, they only charge a dollar a pound here, and if you get ones that are larger than two pounds, it's only two dollars. So, you know, it pays to get the young ones, and if you're going for the cheap, get the large ones that are like way a bunch, man. They're, they cap it out at two bucks, and that's gonna be better. Now, the large ones are definitely better for cooking. I personally like to get all these little small baby ones, the young ones. They're best for eating fresh and raw. I enjoy juicing these guys, cutting them up into salads, but most importantly, I enjoy doing what's called spiral slicing these guys. And the one ball or the round zucchinis like this work the best for spiral slicing. They make the longest spiral slices. So what this is, for many people that don't know, you can literally make your own pasta out of zucchinis with these special spiralizing tools. If you're interested in learning more about the spiralizing tools, you want to visit the website discountjuicers.com. Under the specialty section, you'll find the spiral slicer tools and me demonstrating how to use them and how they work. Basically, they make long noodle-like strands out of nothing but zucchini. These can be eaten raw or you could also cook them up. I, of course, uh, recommend eating all your fruits and vegetables uh, raw whenever possible for the highest level of nutrition. Plus, picking them fresh, they're going to have more nutrition than buying them from the store. I think I'm going to get back to picking just a few more of these uh, one ball zucchinis. So another tip for picking zucchinis is when you're picking them, you want them to yield to gentle pressure. If they don't yield to pressure, that means they're getting more old, mature, and not so good to eat raw. I want to get them when they're a little bit tender, you know, yield to gentle pressure. Kind of like a ripe avocado, you know, but maybe doesn't like smush in too much. But you could push your, foot, your finger into it just a little bit. Now besides these amazing zucchinis they have here, uh, they also offer the zucchini blossoms, these little flowers here. So these guys at present time are only a quarter each. These are used in like those fancy frou-frou restaurants for like, you know, uh, stuffing and all this kind of stuff and they generally fry them up. I do not actually recommend or advocate you guys eat fried foods. It's one of the foods that will actually age you faster than any other food in the whole wide world. This includes fried chicken, fried tempura, and yes, even fried vegetables. What I like to do instead is just make a pate and stuff these and eat them raw. In here you'll see like a lot of the little uh, yellow specks and what that is, that's the pollen. The pollen is very high in amino acids, which is actually protein. And yes, all plants do contain protein if you eat enough of them. I've been getting my protein from plants for many years and you can too. Mmm. Wow. Quite good. It also has a lot of like antioxidants and pigments in the coloring here. Another great way to use this is to just put it on top of salads and, you know, eat them with your salad. Mmm. Delicious. All right, now we're gonna share with you guys how to pick out your beets. Now, this is a whole row of beets here, and they're planted fairly densely. How are you gonna know which is a good one, which isn't a good one? Well, let me tell you guys, a ripe beet is any one you pick, and you could use them at any stage they are. Obviously, the bigger ones, you know, you get a lot more, uh, you know, food for the work that you're doing, but the smaller ones are edible, tender, and more delicious than the larger ones that get more fibrous. In addition, I want to remind you guys that all the beet greens are edible. I mean, you've got to eat in spinach, right? Beet is related to spinach and all these greens are edible. It's also very more closely related to Swiss chard. So you guys could cook these up, put them in green smoothies, or uh, use them in juices, which is probably my favorite way to do them. You want to look for a plant with a nice spread on it. So what does this mean, a nice spread? So that means the leaves go up, but not only go up, but they actually spread out a little bit. This means that it is more mature. So uh, let's see, some of these plants here like kind of go straight up and they're more erect. Some of the plants have leaves that kind of spread out more. And uh, what we're looking at is that, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at one here on the end. That is a nice spread. We're gonna take it and just literally wiggle it and pull it up. Oh, check that baby out. We got one nice little beat here. Now you guys can't purchase the whole thing and all like this, only a dollar a pound. Make sure to use your beet greens. Also the stems, you know, look at the nice red color in the stems, you know. Uh, you could juice these guys up, add some nice red pigments, once again, to eat your foods of color and uh, get some more nutrition in you. Now the interesting thing about beets is that there's been some research with uh, sports nutrition and uh, you know, one of the big things is now juicing the beets to get some of the nutrients in there that increases athletic performance from some of the reports I've read. Besides that, beets are just a good food. I want to encourage you guys to always uh, eat a varied diet. Don't just eat the zucchinis when you come here, you know. You want to get a little bit of everything and include all these 
plant foods in your diet so that you could get a whole plethora of different vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, and more importantly, the phytonutrients that are gonna keep you healthy and young. All right, now we're in the patch of carrots and I don't see any rabbits hanging out. <laughs> That's probably a good thing, all the rabbits would eat the carrots. Do rabbits really like to eat carrots? Well, anyways, I'll tell you, I like to eat carrots. Carrots are rich in beta carotene and other nutrients that are good for us and most people just simply don't eat enough carrots. One of my favorite way to eat carrots is to juice them up, especially when I get the uh, old juice carrots from the store that are big and gnarly and they're very fibrous. I want to extract the nutrition out of there without cooking because juicing by far is going to give you the uh, most bang for your buck, you know, with the carrots. If you're interested in getting a juicer, be sure to check out my other website, discountjuicers.com, where I educate people about juicers, the different kinds of juicers, and the one that's best for you so that you can increase your health. Now, these, in my opinion, are not anywhere near juicing carrots because these are nice, delicate, tender, delicious carrots that you guys should be eating fresh. And, you know, you cannot get this quality of carrot inside the store. These are all in their younger stage at present time. And uh, once again, you're going to want to look for uh, plants that have a, a nice, uh, you know, upright growth habit. Uh, you know, some of the little stalks coming out of the ground are really thin. You want to look for a plant that has actually thicker stalks. That's going to generally mean the uh, carrot is more mature and you're not going to get one that's, uh, you know, one millimeter long. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and wiggle. You know, it's going to take some wiggle power. You're going to have to sit here and uh, wiggle this guy a bit and try to get it out. Sometimes you may pull the tops off. This is also recommended that you may want to like, you know, uh, dig down a little bit to be able to get these guys out. This ground's quite hard, but if you wiggle it enough, check it out. We got one little nice, delicious baby carrot. Now these carrots, once again, are younger. Carrots can be used at any stage of their growth, from when they're really small and tiny to when they're bigger. The problem is when they're small and tiny, that's not a lot of food to be, to be eaten. But at this stage, they're quite nice, delicious, raw, cut up in salads, and these taste unlike any carrots you've bought in the store. Even those baby carrots, the, the secret is the baby carrots in the store, not really baby carrots, they're big carrots that are shaved down. These here are truly baby carrots only for a dollar a pound. Now the other thing I want you guys to remember is that the tops of the carrots are edible. You can eat these, they're just like another leafy green. Actually, they look similar to parsley. Mm, not too bad, they have a nice strong flavor. I generally, generally tend to... Uh, <laughs> compost these guys but they are edible if you want to get every last uh, bit out of your carrots worth yeah so I think I'm gonna go home with a few uh, delicious baby carrots to put on my salad tonight for dinner so another crop you guys can harvest here at Gilcrease are these guys right here these are actually called turnips and so many people don't know that actually you can't eat the turnip greens uh, they're not the most delicious raw you could cook them up uh, or juice them or the young tender leaves are probably decent in, if you add a few to a salad, but I probably wouldn't eat a whole salad of turnip greens. They're very nutritious. There are certain varieties of turnips that are grown specifically for the greens and not for the roots. But what I'm after today is the roots. And we're just gonna come down here and check this baby out. Once again, we gotta use that wiggle technique. Wiggle it out. Look at that. One nice, fresh, dug turnip. So uh, how do you use turnips in the raw foods diet, John? Well, the main thing with turnips is I like to do a few things with them. Number one, I love to pickle the turnips. Uh, number two, I like to take a mandolin and slice them into thin little like slices. And then actually you can use them to wrap up uh, ravioli <laughs> with a nut pate or maybe even cut these into chips and dip them in some guacamole it would be super delicious. These guys could also be spiralized. And then after I spiralize them, I like to soak them in water overnight to make them a little bit more tender and then uh, eat those up as some uh, spiralized uh, turnip noodles. All right, so now we're in the orchard. If you thought I love my vegetables, I love my fruits even more. And uh, one of the challenges you may have if you come to Gilcrease is trying to find the ripest fruits. They have so many different trees and many different varieties of the same you know, fruit. So for example, we got some peaches here. Now this tree happens to be an early peach. I don't know what variety it is, but they're ripe now, whereas other peach trees they have, they will not ripen up for a few months. In addition, they have a lot of apricots, pears, and apples that I normally get here. The easiest way to know if they're ripe is to use your senses. So number one, use your sight. Look on the tree. 
if the fruits look a nice and vibrant color like they look at the store, then chances are they're probably ripe. If they're still green, then they're not so ripe. The next thing is you wanna go out to a fruit and try to pick it off. If it picks off very easily, then it's probably ripe. If you have to tug and it still doesn't detach, it's not yet ripe. Another thing is, is the softness. You know, so it should yield to gentle pressure. This little peach here yields to gentle pressure. That tells me it's ripe. Another really good trick you can use is look at the tree and see if the birds are eating the fruit. If wildlife or the birds are eating the fruit, that's another good sign. Actually, that's a really good tree because if it's the one the birds like, I mean, they got that sixth sense for knowing when stuff is good. That's the one you want to get. Of course, another tip I can give you guys is look down. I just picked this one off the tree, but on the ground there's even riper ones. Because what happens is the tree gives up the fruit. It drops the fruit when they're completely ripe. This one's even a little bit softer than the one I just picked. Mmm. Man, this is the most delicious peach I've had all year. Actually, it's the first peach I've had all year here in May. So it's amazing to have fresh peaches this early. Mm. So I'm in the orchard just finishing up picking my peaches and the peaches are a dollar a pound So it's an amazing price for some fresh picked that, that I picked with my own hands Fruits that taste so delicious now one of the questions you might be wondering is uh, John is Gilcrease organic? So they're not certified organic and they don't claim to be organic and now you might be thinking John you're eating non-organic stuff man What's up? <laughs> so more important than just eating organic is the practices that the farmer is using to grow the food just because it's organic at least that's some set of standards that means something but it's quite unfortunate that even the organic standards are getting kind of twisted from big corporations so did you know that it was allowable to spray uh, antibiotics on your organic apples and then you'd buy apples that are that sprayed with antibiotics I mean when big companies and big corporations get involved, you know, they pay off politicians, in my opinion, to get, you know, the, the rules in favor of them so that it can make their life easier because it's a lot easier to spray stuff than to actually build the soil and build healthy soil so that you can have optimally healthy plants. You know, I personally wish that Gilcrease here did more to enrich their soil. Um, they use the standard conventional fertilizers. I would like to see Gilcrease start using the sea mineral supplementation, such as the C90 product that can be very economical to put into the existing drip lines to increase the minerals that are going into the plants, which will increase the fruit production, also increase the disease and uh, pest resistance of all the crops here plus make them taste better so they use conventional fertilizers which in my opinion is not optimal but once again i want you guys to think of you know your diet and your life as good better best i always want you guys to do the best you can the best you can is if that's a, if you have a backyard garden growing all your own stuff you know with good soil that's the best of course if you don't have that come to a place like gilcrease where you're going to pick it local pick it fresh, hopefully eat it within a day or two, you're gonna have a higher level of nutrition. And also, I personally feel comfortable personally at Gilcrease because, you know, they have not sprayed anything on their orchard or on their vegetables up to this point this year. That being said, they are not organic. They try to use organic controls, organic sprays whenever possible, but sometimes if they have an outbreak, they'll spray in isolated uh, spaces, you know, to save their crop. So at this point in time, you know, I feel that, you know, a uh, locally grown Gilcrease that's not sprayed is far better than buying organic, you know, at Whole Foods, paying triple the price for, and it's not quite as fresh, it's not gonna taste as good, and it's not gonna have a level of nutrition that the stuff here does. So once you guys have selected all the produce from the fields, you're gonna wanna come to the checkout stands. The checkout stands are over here underneath the tent near the entrance where you came in, and uh, you can either drive up if you drove in, or actually you could walk up. Now the tip here is that there actually are two lines. You might see just people all are congested on one side, but you want to go to the back side because there's another line on the back side that oftentimes is shorter. Now besides just being able to purchase the things that you picked yourself, they also have some select items at the checkout stand that you can also purchase. At present time, what they have is they have the garlic, which is the lowest price I've seen in Las Vegas for fresh, locally grown garlic. Uh, three pounds for 10 bucks, amazing deal. They also have spring onions, which are nice little onion bulbs. You could use the greens, you could use the bottoms. And they also have asparagus. This is the last week for locally grown asparagus. Mmm, I love asparagus so much. 
So anyways, let's take a look at some of that produce real quick and uh, share with you guys my tips on selecting some of the best stuff. So now I'm gonna share with you guys how to pick out some garlic here. So they have garlic two ways to get it. You can get it in bulk, three pounds for 10 bucks. This by far is the best value. And uh, if you're picking it by the bag, because this is already pre-weighed by the bag, I would take a look in there and try to get the ones with the biggest, you know, heads in there. Now if you are picking them by the each here, they got a cool, you know, garlic. It's the, the purple kind, I believe this is the red enchilium garlic. And these are sold by the each, so they're a dollar each or three for two. So of course you're gonna to wanna to pick the biggest ones. Next we can move on to uh, sharing with you guys how to pick asparagus. So asparagus, you know, they actually have two varieties today, which is really cool. Many people may not realize this. Um, they got our purple variety and they got a green variety. So, you know, number one, I'd recommend buying the purple whenever it's available because it has different phytochemicals and phytonutrients that's not in the green. I always wanna encourage you guys to eat your food to color and purple asparagus is probably something you guys haven't eaten in a while. Uh, the next thing is if they do have the standard green and uh, when you're looking at them, what I would highly encourage you guys to do is instead of picking out the ones with the nice, you know, uh, fat stalks here on the bottom, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a bunch with the thinner ones. You know, these are much more tender and delicate and much more delicious if you're eating them raw or juicing them or even cooking them up. They do not have to be cooked as long because the fibers are not as tough. It's going to be softer and tastes a lot better. Finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys how to pick out the onions back here. Now these are the spring onions, so these aren't good storing onions, but you could use the bulbs for now, and you could also use all the greens. For these guys, what I would do is I would just look for the bunch of the largest and the biggest, fattest onions. You know, instead of getting ones that are super small, I like ones that are a lot larger. These are gonna be a lot more tender and delicious than those large, dried up onions they get, uh, you know, usually later in the season. <laughs> All right, so I just got my haul from the Gill Crease. Got a lot of stuff today, including some uh, fresh picked squash. And uh, oh, another tip I want to give you guys is if you're going to be out running errands later in the day after you come to Gill Crease, because you're going to get here early, right? You're going to want to get a cooler. And this is just not any cooler that uses ice. This is a, called a thermoelectric cooler. So the cheapest place I've found to get them is that actually at Walmart. Uh, it comes with actually a plug-in, so you could take it when you're traveling and plug it in to the wall at a hotel but also you can plug this into your car 12 volt cigarette lighter it's going to keep your produce cool for you while you're out running errands during the day because let me tell you once you pick some of these greens they're going to wilt super fast because they're not being hydro cooled and all this kind of stuff that they do in conventional agriculture so you're going to want to use them quite quick so well, other things i got were bok choy and some of you guys may be thinking john i know you guys have a you have a big garden at home man why are you buying produce well you know, I only grow certain things at home, things that I believe will benefit me. And, you know, I like to come to Gilcrease to buy things that I'm not growing. And maybe in future years, I'll be growing some of this too. You know, I want to encourage you guys to eat as many fresh fruits and vegetables as you can. And I'm happy that I can support Gilcrease in their mission and allow them to continue to be here because they do need your support if you do live anywhere in Las Vegas. I definitely recommend coming to Gilcrease for all your fresh fruit and vegetable needs first. They're definitely the by far the cheapest price, the lowest price. You can get the best tasting and highest quality stuff anywhere in Vegas because they're not shipping it in. If you want to learn more about Gilcrease Orchard, you want to visit thegilcreaseorchard.org. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode learning about what I'm getting here at Gilcrease, how to pick some of the produce here. And, uh, and hopefully after this you'll learn and know how to use some of the fresh produce to be buying at Gilcrease so that you can start eating healthier today. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my videos for more videos like this where I explain to you guys how to use some of these fresh fruits and vegetables and to teach you guys how to sustainably live a healthy plant-based diet. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time and remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best. All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, and this is gonna be one of my famous haul videos showing you guys what a raw food is, is gonna be eaten